So this is gonna be a, a shorter 5,000 mile update. I can't prove it on my, my phone because I did a factory reset and I thought that by backing up all my data, it would back up the sessions and for some reason it didn't. So if you use Byte Computer Pro and you are going to switch phones or do something like that, it does give you the option to back up your sessions. I just didn't realize that till afterward. About two weeks ago, um, I had ordered another kit to build my girlfriend's e-bike. And um, that same day I was mobbing up this uh, trail towards what's called Pitok Mansion. It's like a house up on the top of a hill. It has a really cool viewpoint. Thought it'd be a really fun ride. Totally didn't uh, downshift or anything. And I was like mobbing up the hill and I'm pretty sure that I killed one of my hall sensors or maybe just broke the wire off or something. And instead of going in and diving into it and just seeing what was wrong, I figured I would just buy a brand new kit for $209 and just overhaul my bike and then have some spare parts and whatnot to play with and tinker with. I put well over, you know, um, you know, basically I would say 5,000 miles. It was well over 4,000. I can't actually tell. Um, it's probably closer to 5,000. So that's what I, that's like the number I'm gonna go with. Cause I mean, who knows what the dude put on it in his year. Plus, you know, me just tallying up mine, it was, you know, well over 4,000. So we'll say 5,000. So this is 5,000 mile update. But yeah, so I overhauled my bike, um, brand new kit. I have ridden a few days on it already. It looks, it looks identical. It's basically the exact same thing. Um, there are a couple differences in the controller I noticed. Um, this kit, again, for $209, uh, comes with a thumb throttle. So I've got a brand new one of those. And I also have a spare one. It has the same amount of wires. Um, I have a spare one for my old kit. And then uh, it, this one comes with cruise control, which is really super awesome. Um, if you're wondering if this will work without having pedal assist hooked up, it does. I do not have pedal assist on my bike just cause you know, I know it doesn't really work that well with these kits anyway. And it's just, yeah, something I didn't really want. So there's basically two separate plugs, one plug for this guy, one plug for the PS, uh, the power assist PAS. So yeah, brand new stuff. I just decided to put the brand new stuff on. I didn't switch out my brake levers cause these are just fine. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I just didn't want to mess with it, honestly. So I've got a, a whole other set of um, brake levers. <clears throat> the battery system is basically the same. Um, I, I didn't change anything. This The controller is the exact same size. Um, there was a couple differences. There's like two wires inside, or that come out of the controller. One's white and one's blue. They're not even on the wiring diagram, which is funny, but they have receptacles for each other. So white plugs into white and blue plugs into blue right into the controller. And yeah, I got everything hooked up, switched the power on and my bike took off in reverse and hit the wall and bounced around for a minute until I turned it off. So that was the white wire. <laughs> so the white wire is supposedly reverse and uh, you're not supposed to connect it into itself and you would connect it up to a separate reverse switch or something like that. Um, yeah, so don't do that. And then blue, um, also after I got it all connected up, then I went for a ride and it was just painfully slow. I was like, what in the hell is going on? I was really disappointed. Um, I, I was like, I, I basically, I got home and I was gonna switch out the controller. And the only other difference that I had noticed was the blue wire. So I decided to unplug that after I'd already pulled out the controller again and like read it all the, you know, like routing it up into the bag and pulling it all out again. So. I disconnected the blue wire, decided to give it a shot, put the controller back in, and then it was perfect race ready as it always has been. So, um, the new one also comes with, um, it comes with a 30 amp fuse box and an extra fuse. I am having a weird issue. I'm sure it's one of my connections, but every once in a while, it'll, my bike will like jar a certain way and then I can feel the motor kind of cut off. Um, so I'm assuming that's one of my connections. I'm going to redo all of this. This is kind of still in like initial test phase. You'll run into bugs anytime you, you know, do these. This is the easiest bike to do, but you'll still run into like little complications and whatnot. Um, again, I'm using the XT60 connectors for my batteries and things. Um, what else? I just, I put on new brakes because I figured if I'm doing a bike overhaul, might as well put on new, or brake pads I should say. They're like all weather. 
But yeah, here's the other side. Um, the other thing to note was my first kit had a six speed freewheel on the back. This one you can't see it because of the light, but it is a seven speed freewheel. So this bike is now correct. So it is seven speed shifter and or 21 speed total. So now um, it shifts perfectly fine again. Everything's, I, I got the rear derailleur adjusted and it shifts and it's great. Um, two things I wanted to include in this video that I didn't record initially um, was that on both of those kits, um, this one was 209, uh, thumb throttle, cruise control, that one was 259 with the LCD display, no cruise. Um, both of the kits, the motor looks identical. So um, the, the rim is identical, the motor is identical. It's probably from, they're both from Yescom. Um, I think it's through like El Accelerator Express with an X, it doesn't really matter. But um, the thing I wanted to say though, is that I had to, I had to true both wheels. So both wheels were not necessarily trued well. I don't necessarily consider that a fault from the company. I think it's probably just because of shipping, um, different elevations and things and the metal kind of, you know, warping a little bit. So um, I definitely suggest truing the wheel when you get these kits. So let's see, I'll talk about the cruise control really quick. So this is actually super awesome. If you notice on a lot of kits, there's like a one put, one button cruise control. Um, and then you, you know, to disengage the cruise, you can just push the brake, or I think you can also just turn the cruise off by pushing it. What I really like about this cheap kit though, is it has the plus and minus buttons. So basically when you have cruise engaged, this uh, lights up to show you that cruise is engaged. And then, so basically it works off of the voltage um, on your throttle. So right when you find the sweet spot to where, you know, if you want to pedal along or, you know, you just want to cruise along at a certain speed, then you hit this, hit the cruise. So it's not like a car, right? A car, like if you were to you know, like start going up a hill, it's going to kick down the gear or, you know, add more gas or whatever to like maintain that speed. Well, this doesn't do that. It just maintains the voltage. So if you encounter a hill, then it's just applying a certain amount of power to the motor. So what's cool though, is that let's say you encounter a hill and you're like, okay, so I'm starting to pedal a little bit harder. You can just hit the up arrow or uh, the up button and it just uh, adds a little bit more voltage. So it's kind of like a, like a step up. Um, it's really handy, man. It's so handy. Like I, I didn't use it at first cause I was like, well, you know, riding in town, you're not really encountering that many stretches of road, but um, I found yeah on my like long, you know, boring stretches of road. It's, it's awesome just to like, you know, pop on cruise and chill. And it's regulating my power usage a lot better. So I'm finding that I'm actually using less battery power because I can find that sweet spot to where I'm comfortable pedaling, but I'm also adding power. And um, it's been really, really handy to do that. But yeah, um, bike's the same. I even got into an accident yesterday. Um, I'm going to try to just put that part of the um, chest cam video in uh, somewhere. Yeah, and it, you know, I try to be, I try to be nice. I know she didn't see me. Um, it was really, really, I could, nothing I could do. I mean, honestly, that particular corner, I'm really like wary about anyway. And I was trying to pay attention, and I don't think I was going that fast. And it just all of a sudden she just pulls out, and I was like, oh my god. So, um, yeah, just keep a lookout, people. <laughs> like, and we should do the same. We should definitely be careful. And I, I, I try to be, even though I, it, it probably on camera it doesn't look like it sometimes. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try to do more chest cams. Actually, um, I ordered a new camera because the one I'm, I've been using for chest cams is actually uh, from work. And so, um, and plus I don't really like it. I don't really like the GoPro. Um, so the one I got, I'll do a, you know, features review on, a, on my other channel and then just kind of incorporate it into the bike channel as well. That'd be pretty sweet. Um, here's another weird one and then I'll end the video there. But so on this particular bike, the seat stem would gra even no matter how much I crank down on this guy, the seat stem would always kind of slowly drop as I'm going along. And then granted, you know, I'm, a, I'm probably one, 185, 190 weight wise. And I usually have like a 30 pound backpack on. So, you know, I know I have a lot of weight and, you know, I wasn't really that worried about it, but it was super annoying because you find that really comfortable spot where your, you know, your backpack's not too heavy and your legs can be extended long enough. And, you know, basically your regular like cycling stance and you like that, you know, and having it drop all the time was just painfully annoying. So <laughs> I 
found some weird idea on, on the on the internet, the interwebs, and it told me to put toothpaste on there. And you know what? It freaking worked, man. It freaking worked. I can't even believe it. Like, you can still kind of see some residue, but honestly, I've measured that distance between the tape and the bar, or the, the top, the seat stem, and it is exactly the same. And this is, this is it's so crazy, man. I can't even believe, I can't even believe it. So, toothpaste, there you go. <laughs> like, regular Crest toothpaste.